Hi there, Ed Rosich here, your CEO with a uh, special Dude, Who Are You and What Do You Do For Us podcast. I've got a really fun guest here today, Josh Peach. Josh? Hey, Ed. Thanks for having me. Um, uh, I'm excited to be sitting down with you. I've been uh, eager to do this since uh, day one. How long you been a dude and what do you do for us? Uh, I'm going into my 14th year. I started uh, in 2004. I was a sales rep in New England and uh, today I'm happy to say that I'm the company's uh, evangelist. The company's evangelist. What, uh, I'm not sure a lot of people wouldn't even know what that means. Uh, it's a critical role for sure. Yeah, so the evangelist role in companies is uh, essentially someone that speaks enthusiastically about things that they're passionate about. And, that's uh, I'm extremely passionate about what we provide for our clients and then our team uh, as well. We've got great people that we work with and we're great people that we work for. So I just basically spread the good word of the dude around the country, talk about all types of things like leadership, uh, teamwork, do thought leadership, especially on our, on our solutions as well and how they fit for people that, uh, that may not have us yet. Awesome. You know, uh, put folks in your uh, in your shoes for a week or a month. Like I know you're you're all around. Yeah. So uh, I travel uh, anywhere between uh, thirty and sixty percent of my time. Uh, so I do about a hundred to anywhere between a hundred and hundred and fifty flights a year. And uh, this boy. this year I'll be from. My easternmost point will be Moncton, New Brunswick, which I'm excited to go see my friends up in Canada. And my westernmost point is going to be Anchorage, Alaska to do a keynote in the second week in December, get ready for Christmas with some cold weather. That's amazing. You, you must touch hundreds, if not thousands of people. Like if you, if you try to tally up how many people you stand up in front of a year, I mean, wild ass guess. Yeah, I had that question actually happen uh, last week. You know, in New Jersey alone, it was uh, it was over 600. If I if I tallied it up, it's somewhere probably between uh, in any given year between 30 and 50,000 uh, total. 30 and 50,000 people. Yeah. You yeah. must. Uh, that's crazy. <laughs> I mean, I um, I wasn't even aware um, of the magnitude. You know, I figure some of these things I have 25 folks or maybe a couple hundred, but it sounds like you're getting in front of some pretty big audiences. Yeah. You know, I'll talk to anybody that'll listen and, uh, my audience can be as low as one and it's been as high as, uh, as almost a thousand and, uh, just some wonderful opportunities. And, uh, I've even talked in some school settings with, 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 uh, with kids and students and talking about, uh, college fairs and things like that. So it's been, it's been really exciting and a, and a very wide audience. Awesome. What, when you get in front of folks, are you, uh, what do you talk about the dude or are there other messages you sort of weave in? Like, how, how do you do this? Yeah, you know, we, we provide some really incredible opportunities and solutions for our clients. And one of the things that we found at, at the dude and something that I found is that the most important piece is, is typically the one that we have a stumbling block on, which is the people. Uh, if the people don't have the attitude and the, and the, and the ideas and the, and the excitement to do something to make a change, then the process can't happen. And if a process can't happen, then obviously looking at a software solution to help them with that process isn't in the cards. So a lot of what I talk about with folks is you know, getting their attitude right, talking about the difference between a good day and a bad day is their attitude and it doesn't cost anything. And just trying to give them some, some relatable stories of my life that, that I had those same stumbling blocks that they do to kind of get out of your own way sometimes. So that's really a lot of what the focus is. A lot of this uh, definitely revolves around the solutions that we provide, the company that we are, the company that we keep, and the people that we want around it. So that's really uh, a lot of the focus today. Wow. I mean, it, it just... Uh I'm sitting here trying to think about how to even measure the positive impact you have on our client base, probably prospect base. I mean, um, just just huge. I'm sure you've probably got a couple of of really interesting stories that you know have, have touched you, um, you know, touched your heart type of thing. Uh, with some of the uh, speeches you've given and people you've been in front of, any any sort of come to mind uh, uh, off quick? Yeah, you know, I had uh, I had one this morning. You know, I'm very fortunate that uh, you know I give everyone that will listen uh, my my direct cell phone number as well as my email address, Josh at schooldude.com or Josh Peach at dudesolutions.com. And uh, I, I encourage them to reach out to me uh, to do anything. It doesn't need to be a, maybe just a word of encouragement, something. And uh, it was great this morning at 7 a.m. I, I got a phone call from a client that wanted to tell me that he was excited about the fact that he went out and bought some tablets to get into mobile work order management mm -hmm. from a talk that I did last week in New Jersey. And uh, he ended the call with saying, you know, I was really excited to see you on the, on the agenda 
you make a positive impact on on uh, myself and my team when when you come and speak and you make a difference. And the last, uh, the second one, real quick, that that uh, I was really uh, happy to hear last night was one of our clients. Uh, shared with me that he actually brought four of his team members to one of my keynotes and something I do that's a little bit unique is I always have kind of interesting shirts and the idea behind the shirt is because uh, you need to be reminded of yourself people talk about sticky notes and things like that and uh, the big thing for me is I look in the mirror every day and if I have a shirt on that says be positive or be awesome or you know, be outstanding or any of the shirts that I have. And I, I wear a t-shirt with a sport coat. And so I had one that said, be awesome. And his staff says that every day they, they go into the office and they're reminded to be awesome. And it came from a talk and that, that meant something. So they're oh, wow. making that positive impact as a person and not just as a, as a process is pretty cool. That's, uh, that's really cool. So, you know, I, we're here at Dude U. Um, we had a, a client reception a couple nights ago. Um, it was fascinating to me like it was almost like Elvis entered the building when you came in like you know do you ever have to like put your ego in check a little bit with all the high-fiving and hugging and handshaking you know when when you love what you do and you love the people that are around you it's it's very humbling and it's you know I, I, there's no words that can put into how I feel when I see anyone and everyone that we've touched that we've talked to that we've got a story to tell and uh it's just it's just awesome it's i i i really don't think i'm uh i'm I'm just a guy Mm -hmm. and uh and i'll always be just a guy and and i'll always love the people that we serve and um and i and i think that 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 translates and interprets to them that i'm 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 pretty easy to get to and Mm -hmm. uh and and approachable and uh and i love high-fiving and i love handshake and i love hugging i love i love just seeing people that 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 want to be seen and 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 talk to me so uh, yeah it was great uh, the reception was phenomenal it was a, it's been a great event for uh, for the dude and I think everybody's coming away with some real excitement yeah no I I, I, I definitely see it um, you know when you when you think about uh, how you got to where you're at today as an evangelist and uh, m- maybe back up a little bit so you were in sales for how long Oh, I've been in sales for uh, over 20 years 20 in years. different capacities in different mm-hmm. places. And when did you when did you make that flip to you know we we'll call it full time evangelist uh, as your day job here? Yeah, February of 2015 was 2015. when. 2015. Yeah, was when I really started to get folk, folks interested to to have me speak. Awesome. And how did that like did did you just sort of come up with the idea, or did, did Tom or Nick or somebody pop that idea? Yeah, up it, was, it was it was Tom Knox. Uh, was it was his it was his idea for the for the title. Uh, essentially, I got a, a slide deck that I wasn't comfortable with to deliver a, a, a program, and uh, I modified it. And I and I it was to change or not to change. How was the question? And it was really focused and geared towards the idea of, of changing your your software, changing your process, and. Uh, I had an accident with a concussion and I just wasn't comfortable and I wasn't comfortable with what I was doing and I came up with this idea of uh, being able to say thank you to someone I never got to say thank you to and shared something that was kind of personal which is my my grandfather who was a custodian and an immigrant. I'm first born here in the United States and uh, something that I have at the bottom of my stairs in my house is uh, the suitcase that that he packed his life in to come here Mm. um, and to show appreciation. I I have that and always remember where I came from and can you pack your life in your suitcase and so I did that talk and people really liked it and it gave me an opportunity to say thank you to my grandfather and word of mouth carried on and carried on and and then uh, in 2015 I was able to actually have my grandmother in the audience of one of my keynotes and say thank you um, and from there, it's just it's just blossomed. And I don't submit speaking opportunities. People actually keep me busy just calling. So that's it's, awesome. Uh, it's really been fantastic, and it's it was it was kind of an organically grown thing. Uh, Tom came up with the kind of the layout and the idea of it, and then uh, the dude, as they they do in great dude fashion, said, "Run with it." And uh, it's just been an awesome ride. Well, you're uh, you're clearly making an impact, and and I know you're probably gonna to. Uh, sort of do some verbal jujitsu on me uh, on this one uh, to spin it into a positive like if there was one or two things you wish dude nation would do better to help you be more effective as an evangelist um, you know what would that be and I know you're going to try to spin this positive yeah you know it's real that's a that's a great question and it's we all no matter how positive we are, we always have yeah. bad days, we always have bad things, we always have bad instances. I have to tell you, and it's 
it, it's not because you're here with me and it's not because of anything other than um, in the last 140, 150 days that you've been here, there's been a lot of really great change to things that I've seen that were a need, that were really tough. You filled a lot of gaps, uh, not just yourself, but you've developed a team to fill a lot of gaps. I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there that, that causes and can cause frustration or negative feelings. And the nice thing that's happening right now is you're, you're tackling them head on, right? So you're saying, okay, we have issues, we have challenges, we have whatever you want to call it. Let's address them. Let's not keep them, you know, hidden. Yeah. So the biggest thing for me is that visibility, that communication, and that understanding that, hey, we're not perfect, mm -hmm. we're, but we're going to try to fix it and come as darn close as we can to, uh, to being that. And uh, so I really, right now, I think that this is just uh, wholeheartedly, this is the greatest time in the company, uh, the growth of the company, the uh, explosive growth of the company now, the, the mm -hmm. careers that we're providing, the opportunities that we're providing, and then just carrying the torch of greatness, that uh, the good to great model that we've instilled in our company since the beginning from Jim Collins' book. So uh, I, can't, I can't really put my finger on it. The only thing I can say is that uh, just keep letting people come to you and, and, and tell you what's going on and look at it with, uh, with open eyes as you guys are doing and, and figuring out how do, we, how do we fix it. Is it. Is it a me problem? Is it a you problem? Is it a we problem? Is kind of how I tell people yeah, when, well when said. they have challenges. Yeah, well said on that. Any cool hobbies or? Uh... Yeah, uh, no, not really. Uh, I've, I've got, got chickens, yeah, I've got, right? I got chickens, goats, guinea hens. They always seem to come up in conversation. Dogs, cat, a rabbit that's litter box trained. Uh, I've got a, a, a beautiful fiance that's been my, one of my best friends since we were children. Uh, we've got a, a wonderful uh, ten-year-old about to be eleven, and uh, and now a three-month-old uh, son. So we've got two boys, and uh, and my ninety-six-year-old grandmother and mother live next door to me. So uh, outside of travel, it's been keeping me pretty busy. I've actually taken up not a hobby, but a, a, something you're pr passionate about: cutting wood because of all of the uh, nor'easters we've been having in Boston. Yeah. So every you week, you did it sort of yeah. out of necessity. This yes, last, yes, a absolutely weeks. a necessity. So uh, yeah, I've been doing a lot of a lot of. Uh, it may be a hobby because I found it actually is uh, listening to you. You were talking about how it's therapeutic, and uh, my chainsaw prior to this is a uh, was a was battery operated, so it wasn't all that Im wasn't all that impressive. Oh, so man. if anybody wants to talk about chainsaw envy and all that, I'm not the guy. Uh, but I did I did b I bump up to something pretty impressive that cuts real well, and uh, it's been a lot more enjoyable. Well, I hope folks that are chainsaw snobs <laughs> stuck around to hear that you actually <laughs> bought something worthy, because I think you probably lost some folks with, yeah, the, uh, yeah, with yeah. the electric chainsaw. Yeah. Yikes. Well, Amy did a lot more of the cutting uh, than I did, so when I'm not home, if there's a down branch in the, uh, you know, something in the driveway, I wanted to make it something that wasn't too too hairy or pull it. And they actually, they've come a long way, so uh, they're pretty impressive. Awesome. Um, questions for me? Anything on your mind uh, that, that you'd like to ask of me? Yeah, you know, you know, one of the things that that intrigues me is is a leader and a successful leader is, you know, where do you where do you find yourself? You know, you read books, you look at things, you talk to to people, you go to seminars. Um, there's different leadership styles. There's different, and I don't want to use the word style, but there's different feelings of how. You're, you want to be a leader and how mm -hmm. you want your leaders to lead and just kind of how do you see us and how do you see you in expanding the leadership and kind of the style of, of where we're going? Yeah. Um, so maybe I'll start a little bit with, um, you know, my, my own sort of personal philosophies. You know, I have picked up, I, I've created nothing new, right? Uh, everything I do, I've borrowed from or stolen from somewhere. And not only borrowed and stolen from um, leaders I admired and, and wanted to emulate, but also, you know, we've all worked around or for or with leadership that uh, gave you some great learning by watching what not to do. And I make uh, five mistakes a day as a leader, but, um, you know, what, what I have tried to synthesize is a couple of things. One. Um, really listen you know I didn't do I had to make some decisions obviously in my first little bit of time but I tried really hard not to come in with this big new sheriff's badge and and you know make a lot of change without listening to folks um, I think the other thing and I've, I've alluded to this on other podcasts um, the software business is like no other in that it is a hundred percent people intrinsic intense 
the ideas are, al are, are created by people, alchemized to a keyboard by people, sold by people, implemented by people, customer, you know, client care by people, marketing, blah, 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 all of that. And as we've proven this past year with a couple of days of, of snow, as long as we've got an internet connection and a phone, we don't even need a building. And the only way you can do that is if you've got rock solid um, culture with, with great people. Um, I also, the last thing I'll say to that is, um, and I, I got this, was a great quote from uh, the last CEO I worked with, a guy named Mike Wessinger. And, you know, um, you could be a one day judge or a 365 day coach. And I want leaders that take that 365 day coach mentality versus looking at what you did yesterday and saying, oh, what a knucklehead, you screwed up, right? Yeah. Um, I think that's that's so important. So those three things are probably uh, core, but uh, you know, learning, uh, leading is a learning evolution and I'm gonna pick up two new things next week out of a book or a podcast or watching somebody um, get it right. Great. Well, I have one more question. Uh, I've tapped into you uh, for for suggestions on books. So any, I know that you've got some uh, pretty aggressive goal yourself on the number of books you want to read this year. So any good reads as of late that you'd yeah, suggest? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I try to read 50 books a year and I'm a book at like 12 already. So I'm a little bit ahead of my curve uh, for the year. But you know, I, I've mentioned a couple um, that I'll re-mention because it, they're like transformational for me. Um, you know, um, Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, he was a Stoic philosopher back, you know, I think 60 uh, AD. Um, Ryan Holiday's got a couple of great books, Ego is the Enemy, Obstacle is the Way. Um, Ray Dalio, um, who was uh, uh, the CEO of a you know multi-billion dollar hedge fund, wrote a book called Principles. I mean, those three, you know, I'm, I'm on my probably 10th read of uh, meditation, probably 8th read of, of Ego's the Enemy, and on my second um, with, with Dalio's book. But I recently picked up another one that, I mean, just hit me in the head um, like a sledgehammer. Um, it's a book called Powerful by Patty, I'm gonna mess up the last name, uh, Patty McCourt, she was the chief people officer of Netflix. And I don't know if you've ever gotten that PowerPoint that circulates on the web about how Netflix built their culture, but she and the, the CEO of, of Netflix sort of put that PowerPoint together and this book is um, expansion on, on some of the key philosophies that they built around the Netflix culture. and. I mean, if you want a, a great, hopefully, canary in the coal mine for what I'd like to do at the dude, pick up that book or listen to it on an audio book or get a summary because there's some there's some diamonds in there. Great. Well, I got I actually bought Principles last night. Oh, uh, good. That came up in some conversation, and it's uh, I think it's somewhere around 600 pages. So I'll be busy yeah. for a little bit with well, that. Well, let, let me give you a, <laughs> a, a, a handle with that book uh, about the first quarter of it is his life story, how he got to be who he was, which is really interesting. But if you want to, um, it's sort of like getting to the get into the main meal quick, get into where he actually lists out his principles because they are standalone. And, you know, the, the last, you know, two thirds of that book, just open up a page and start reading because um, you'll get you, you don't need to have the, the context of it. And um, I don't know how many he's got in there, but man, every one of them. I, I find there are some books where, you know, I just feel like just dipping it into a vat of highlighter ink, and that's <laughs> one of the books uh, that I have. Yeah. I'll look forward to it. Cool. Well, we really appreciate what you do. Um, you, you're clearly making an impact with the rest of Dude Nation, and I'm really thankful to have this time with you today, Josh. You too. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.